And I think we're ready to rock and roll. Welcome back, Captain. Thank you, Ada. All systems are now operating within acceptable parameters. Shall I take our ship into orbit? You shall. Let's get out of here. There we go. Those paddles on that ship are cool looking. And welcome back everybody to the Outer Worlds. I'm an old guy gaming and we are about ready to leave the Emerald Vale. We're just going to wrap up He's a couple of things. He's a long time friend of mine and he wishes he was a dwarf. Oh. <laughs> everybody welcome Varg to the channel. <laughs> Varg, How you welcome, doing, buddy. man? Um, yeah, so what? Oh, we got dudes down there. Got a bunch of dudes down there. So yeah, basically there's just, there was a couple other things I wanted to do before we left. I don't have any more quests to do here. Um, because everything's been completed, but, um, I just wanted to check out a couple places, uh, before we leave. Okay, so that's what we're about in this episode. My goodness, we've got enemies in front and back. So, um, let's deal with the, with these guys first, I guess. And then we'll take out the behemoths. Uh, because the behemoths are far more dangerous than the vandals are. Alright, let's do this. Let's run over here. Say goodnight, Gracie. What? Okay, that takes care of these guys. What's that noise? Hmm. Were they, like, guarding something over here, or what? I don't see anything over here. Other than just a couple of containers. Oh, wow, look at that ship up there. That is cool. Alright. Good enough. Now, let's go ahead and kill these... Primals over here. These guys are going to be a little bit harder to kill. So we've got plasma damage on all three of these weapons. But we'll probably won't do melee. So the shoddy up for up close in uh, the plasma rifle. But let's start off with a snipe. We'll kill the little guys first and then we'll, we'll finish off the behemoth. All right, here we go. Oh shit, we got a load. Okay, he's dead. No! Ah! <laughs> he's right there! Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh yeah. This stuff's putting the hurt on those guys. Oh shit! Alright, got him. He's still alive. Is he dead? Okay. Yeah, that went reasonably well. I wouldn't necessarily call that a graceful fight, but that's worth 50, 50 bank. That's worth selling for sure. Yeah, if you're not paying attention, you know, these guys will... They kind of go into like a, uh, what's the word for it? Almost a camouflage type mode, and you're going to literally step right on top of them before you even know they're there. That's how I lost my companion. All right. Oh, yeah, let's go up here. This is cool looking. This is where all the lava sucked down into the power plant. Ooh, that's a long way down. Whoa! Don't fall. 
We got another leak. That's pretty cool, man. Wonder what you ma makes you wonder what that guy was doing up here. Okay, well that was the pathway that I had seen earlier. Um, so let's go back down through this valley. Uh, we want to find that named cannon. We're gonna kill him, and then I think we're done here. I don't think there's anything else to do, as far as I can tell. I think we'll have more uh, bad guys to fight here. More of those uh, primal guys. Yeah, right there. All right, here we go. Oh, shit, he's right there. <laughs> okay, we got him. This plasma gun is phantasmagorical, man. I'll tell you what. Wasted him. What's this guy have? Nothing. Yeah, I was walking, uh, I walk, was walking over this path, or this pass here. Uh, Parvati was following me. I came around here and I was looking at the geothermal facility because that's the first time I'd seen it. And the guy was, or, or the, the gorilla thing was just right here, but he looked like a rock. I didn't even notice it. And then he woke up and attacked us. And by the time I was able to kill him, that was before I, you know, had this plasma weapon too. Um, Farvati had succumbed, and on Supernova, you can't revive your companions, unfortunately. It's a sad day, man. Really sad day. Alright, let's go back over this way. Hello, Varg. How's it going, man? What you up to? Twenty hours, really? I didn't know it was that short. I guess the the good side to something like that, though, is then you could replay it again with a whole different build. I'm really having fun with it, though. But you know, forty hours—that's not bad, though. Actually, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good amount of time for a game. Much shorter than that, and it might be a little bit on the short side, but... Okay, so this is the guy I wanted to... to take on. So that's a named cannon, Orthrus. I just don't... It seems to me like there should have been a quest to kill him. I don't know why there wasn't. But... Alright, let's do this. You know what we're going to do first, though? is let's do um let's do a quick save just in case things go south on us because we would lose a hell of a lot of progress if <laughs> I accidentally died right now. Uh that would not be good. Alright. Thirty minutes, wow. But, you know, doing something like that is like, you're like absolutely doing nothing but the main quest and doing the bare minimum, which I wouldn't find very fun myself, but, okay, let's take Orthrus out here. Oh, that's awesome in slow-mo, check that out. Boom! 244 crit. Oh shit, he's still alive. Oh, he killed me. <laughs> I thought he was dead, man. Oh man, okay. Finally, finally a challenge here. All right, let's um let's load the game back up again. We need to um 
One of the things I should have done is I should have taken a, a health pack a little sooner than I did. And uh, he, he had a couple more ads too. Okay, let's look at one other thing too. Let's go to here. And this gives us tactical time dilation recharge rate. That actually could come in handy now that I think about it. Um, or there's a couple things here that help us with like sniping. I have to figure out which one it is. Weapon attack speed. I think, is it this one here? Yeah, critical critical damage plus 15%, bonus to extra headshot, weak spot, damage 25%. Let's let's take a hit of that before we, we start this fight this time. Uh, we do want to make sure we're hitting him in the head, though. That might have been the other problem. I think I might have hit him in the ass, too, so... Okay. Here we go. So we'll take a hit of that. Oh, yeah, we took down half his health with that hit. We got him. Nice. Now we just got to finish off the trash here. Cool. Okay, well. Did he drop anything really good? Not a chrono field aggregator. Uh, restore some of your TCT meter when you deal a critical hit. This effect has a cooldown. Oh, wow, that would be cool. It's worth 500 coin. That's some nice loot. Okay. So I guess he was, you know, I guess he's just a random world encounter that you're supposed to kill. Because we never did come across a quest for him. Candid Howler. Nifty. All right, let's stop off at the Geo plant one more time um, and use the vending machine. And then I think we're done here, guys. I think we're ready to rock and roll on out of here. See what's next. So let's see. We want to sell all this junk here. Okay. Um, what else do we want to sell? Let's sell this assault rifle. We can sell this long gun. <clears throat> I think I want to keep all the rest of these weapons for the moment. 262, 277. No, you know what? I don't think we need this anymore because we upgraded this pristine to take its place. That does have the gyro side on it, though, but... Yeah, let's sell that. I think we're, we're done with that guy. Uh, what's this do? Rebuilt mining gear. Yeah, we don't need that. This gives us one-handed melee. And what's that give us? One-handed melee. So we have two of those. Uh, so we'll sell one. This gives us sneak. That gives us lockpick. This gives us stealth. So we're going to keep all the rest of that stuff. All right, I think we're I think we're good to go, guys. I think we're good to go. I'm not gonna sell any of that. All right, it's time to go. I hope they come out with mods uh, for this game. They probably will. And one of the first mods they need to come out with is, for goodness sakes, let us save wherever the hell we want to. What are you doing, man? He's just sitting there. Hope you're not bugged. I want to look at something real quick before we take off. Uh, install mod. Yeah, we don't want to turn that to a plasma weapon. And we didn't want to put the O side on it. So that's the best we can really do for that right now, I guess. 
We've don't got a ton of money for tinkering, so I think we'll... Did we tinker this already? We increased the damage to 137. Let's do that. I'm really digging this plasma rifle, man. I'll tell you what. Uh, let's do a, a repair all. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we want to break down any of that stuff. We'll sleep for the um, minimum amount of time. Get a little bit of sustenance going on. I think we're ready to go. All right, this is it. Let's do a quick save right here, just in case something weird happens. And I think we're ready to rock and roll. Welcome back, Captain. Thank you, Ada. All systems are now operating within acceptable parameters. Shall I take our ship into orbit? You shall. Let's get out of here. Here we go. Those paddles on that ship are cool looking. It's almost like you can go in the water or something. Against all odds, the unreliable takes flight. If you give your commands to focus fire target, blip, 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 blip. Phineas, okay, we haven't heard from him in a long time. Um, good, I've been waiting to hear from him. Aha, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. He got squished. <laughs> How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing. Drippage? I you. <laughs> drippage? <laughs> um, I've been feeling a little lightheaded also. I can slow down time. Um, never been better. Yeah, you know what? Never been better. Good. Great. Excellent. Let's move on. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. <clears throat> Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. Okay. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. Okay, sounds reasonable. You need to get to Stellar Bay <clears throat> on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me. Help us find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Okay. Why do I get the feeling like this guy has an ulterior motive? <laughs> um, you can now travel to something something. I missed all that. Fine, I'll go have a word with Gladys. Why do I need a nap key to land on a planet? Slow down, you're asking me to get involved with the black market? Or I could put a couple light years between me and Halcyon. Can't I land somewhere outside Stellar Bay like we just did? Um, hmm. Let's, yeah. Why can't we just land somewhere outside like we just did on this planet? Well, not us, but the other guy. In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia. And in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. More than the ones we've already fought? You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Cult Kelly. Gladys Cult Kelly, you said something about needing a napkin to land on Monarch. About this Gladys person, how do I know I can trust her? What's stopping me from just leaving Halcyon altogether? Um, that's a fair question. Without a skip drive, good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest That's star. a good point. Yeah, we need a skip drive. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. Okay. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. 
All right, you said something about needing a nav key about this Gladys person. How do I know I can trust her? Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. I don't like the idea of working with a criminal. Hmm. Well, my character probably wouldn't care so much about that. Why do I need a nav key to land on a planet? Isn't that pretty damn obvious? Let's just ask the question anyway. Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon. <laughs> terraformed badly. And almost completely lawless. You'll love it. <laughs> Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys called Kelly. Fine, I'll go have a word with Gladys. Excellent, I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the captain's quarters. Oh, okay. Disguise, huh? I'll put it to use, good use, thanks. You want to explain what a holographic shroud is? Yeah. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of You already of said that. The shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. All right. It has limits. First generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. You mentioned this thing has limitations. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Oh, geez, okay. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Okay. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Gotcha. Okay. Um, why do I need this gadget? Uh, no, why do I need a gadget for this? Couldn't I just steal a uniform or something? <laughs> a change of clothes. What is this? Some old spy cereal? <laughs> what inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? Well, some of them probably would. The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. Sweetens your breath. Well, there you go. <laughs> exactly. How the hell does a holograph sweeten your breath? Science, that's how. Uh, okay. Uh, people will actually fall for this? It seems far-fetched. <laughs> the beauty is they don't expect it. The Shroud is the only one of its kind. We humans have a tendency to overlook the unexpected. Activate the disguise, walk past someone. What do they see? A figure dressed like a fellow employee. Don't act odd. They won't focus on you. All right. We'll put it to good use. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Nice. Okay. Oh, wow, check this out. We're in space. See, all of this was covered up before. Freaking awesome. Neat. Okay, so let's go... Um, this is where we decide to go somewhere, but before we do that... This is our chair. Um, let's go take a look at our quarters. So that's all locked up because that's the airlock. Hey, we've got a... We need to fix this here. That can't be safe. That thing keeps uh, arcing out, too. <clears throat> Alright, let's go check out our quarters. Oh, nice! This is cool, man. 
Pick up the holographic shroud. Whoa! That's loud. Holographic shroud protects the disguise on you and your companions that gives you access to restricted areas provided you have the correct ID cartridge for that area. Restricted areas are off limits to unauthorized personnel and otherwise result in being attacked on site. Roger that. Okay. This is my bed. This is my container with I can't open. This is oh storage bin. Woot woot. Oh, that's not a lot of space though, is it? Goodness gracious. Okay. Um we could store our mods in here. Chrono what does this do again? Restores some of your TTD meter when you deal a critical hit. This effect has a cooldown. Uh, geographic scanner, a tech kit. Oh, right. I wanted to put this on, on my armor. Extend a sight, mag two power, a couple of Mr. Ouches, a Mr. Power. That adds p plasma. Fun times. Okay, that's critical damage uh, to the barrel. So let's dump some of this stuff off for now. Geographic scanner. This I want to try and put on my armor. That's the O, uh, o site plasma damage. A fun times. Did we see if we could install that on something? Let's move those over. All right, I want to look at something here real quick. So this has already had it already has a grip mod installed. But it doesn't have an attack mod installed. What's what grip mod does it have installed though? I wonder. Hmm. I don't know. All right, let's put a couple of these things in here, too. Um, just to kind of reduce our weight a little bit. So what's this do? Companion ability cooldown. A pick-me-up pill. Yeah, let's store those. Uh, let's store about half of these tuna. Actually, no, let's store all of them. We've got so much food already. Couple of those we'll store. Hardened armor rating plus ten. That's nice. Movement speed twenty, melee attack weapon speed twenty. All right, I, that's probably good enough for that stuff for now. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we got a terminal. Let's take a look at it. Uh, authorized login sequence recognized. Welcome, Captain. Messages for Alex Hawthorne. Hawthorne's unread messages from you, Bedford. Um, oh, I forgot to mention in my previous message, silly me, I'm mailing you a copy of my favorite serial, The Space Adventures of Singularity Steel. It's about a dashing space pirate with a heart of, well, steel. It's not exactly board approved, so don't go showing it around to your space, spacer buddies. I hope it will amuse you while you're not out adventuring. Any similarities to a certain someone, you are entirely intentional. Are entirely intentional. All right, return to root. Uh, archive messages. Wait. Hold on a sec. Messages for Alex Hawthorne. Unread messages. Okay, so he only has one unread. Here's a sent message. Look, there's no calling for shouting. My terminal was busted. Had a few too many and might have knocked it off the desk. You know how it is. Sometimes you just gotta cut loose. I'm not telling you where Wells is, so lay off. Buy me a drink at the last... At the lost hope next time I'm in, and I might forgive you. Okay. Um, archive messages. Dearest Alex, I can't tell you how pleased I am to finally hear from you. Your message was hilarious. I'm delighted by your sense of humor and the tale of your hijinks. I hope your terminal will cooperate for the foreseeable future. By the by, I was scraping Groundbreakers comps network for tasty little tidbits, and I noticed you declined to dock at Edgewater's landing pad and instead touched down in the wilderness. You rugged individualist, you. I only pray that idiot Thompson wasn't giving you any trouble. 
Anyway, I hope your meeting down on Terra 2 pr proves fruitful, and I look forward to co corresponding with greater regularity. Your best friend, Udum. Alex, I don't know where you were raised, but I'd hazard to guess it must have been a barn, because anyone with even a modicum of decent rearing would know it's unforgivably rude to ignore the ardent, sincere message of one's friends. Please respond. Hello, hello. Hope this finds you well. It was a pleasure to see you in my office again last week. Once again, I'm terribly sorry about the impounding mix-up. How could it have happened a second time? Terminals these days, I swear, dreadfully unreliable. Aha, just like your ship. I hope you've given some thought to that thing we discussed. You know about the Wells follow? I'm so sorry to press, but I have the strangest tickling feeling that you really do know him. And if you could just tell me where he is, well, it would be marvelous for our friendship, wouldn't it? Looking forward to seeing you again, wingman, your dear friend, Udom. Dear Alex, hello, Udom here, Udom Bedford. We met when I accidentally... Oh, you know what? I'm reading... I'm reading these in the reverse order, aren't I? <laughs> we met when I accidentally impounded your ship. My silly fat fingers embarrassing me once again. I hope we that wasn't too terribly inconvenient for you. It was such a pleasure for me. And I tremendously appreciate your forbearance and not throttling me. You really are quite the gentleman. If you're ever in Groundbreakers airspace, well, space, space, please don't hesitate to look me up. The Lost Hope Service Spectrum Vodkas. Perhaps we could try every color. You know, really tie one on. Let me know. Okay. Um, so let's return to root and logs. So, titled Shrink Ray. Note to self, remember the ladder. No, remember this later. No better, Ada, remind me weekly to check this log until I tell you to stop. Yes, I mean continually. No, Ada, not if I'm dead. Why would you even ask me that? Back to my point. I saw in actuality with my own two eyes a sublimely powerful weapon in Wells' lab. Just sitting there for the taking. If the gray hair were to look away or forget about it, maybe, or if I had asked a smidgen more nicely, he called it a shrink ray, but wouldn't let me test that claim after I lost my temper. Said he was inspired to create the thing by the achievements of other scientists who dared to push the boundaries of human knowledge and decency laws. I had heard rumors of fantastical weapons like this one, weapons that push the boundaries of the mind and science. Science is cutting edge, but I figured they were just stories to be honest. To be honest, laying eyes on well shrink ray firsthand is enough to make a fellow wonder if there's more to the rumors. More to be had. Um, okay, hammer power. The, the last time I got sloshed, I mean, was imbibing at the last hope on the groundbreaker. Look, Udom was really free with the drinks. He seems like an okay fellow. I shamelessly but subtly eavesdropped on two Mardettes yammering on about a mad scientist some years back who claimed he'd made a huge discovery that would change the fate of the colony. Like none of us have heard that one before. But here's the good part. The Mardet said the mad scientist kept yelling about the hammer's power or something similar. A strange weapon with a special power created by a crazy lab coat. Sure fits the bill. It would be another one of those weapons that inspired Wells. Black Market Leads Why, why, why won't Wells just give the shrink ray to me? Blast him to the depths of the labyrinth on Tartarus and back. Let the record show I did apologize for shouting him down five times, but the architect be damned is just sitting there neglected and gathering dust. I should have commandeered it and thanked him without asking permission or a breaking expensive equipment when he said I wasn't ready yet and that even if it were, he couldn't entrust it to someone like me. <clears throat> what does that even mean, I ask? That I'm not trustworthy enough? That I'd use it to wipe out the good, hardworking folks of the colony like some sort of moralless psycho? I'd, I'll admit to maintaining some questionable associations, but I follow a strict code of me, myself, and mine. What's not to respect in that? Exactly. Now I have to wait until Wells forgets or thinks he's misplaced it. In the meanwhile, I have been tracking down additional rumors pertaining to others of these science weapons throughout Halcyon. If gossip holds true, my next step will be to check with the black market merchants on the ground baker and in Fall Brook. All right, so science weapons. We got to be on the lookout for science weapons. Okay, that took entirely too long, <laughs> but you got to read some of that through that stuff in these in these games. Make yourself at home, Captain. Uh, okay. Thank you, Ada. I will do just that. Where's the head, though? What if I have to go to the bathroom while I'm in my quarters? Now we got a Polaroid camera here. That's good. That is so cool looking, though. All right, guys. Well, it's time for us to wrap up this episode. Uh, we finally have a little bit of storage, so that's good. I was hoping we would get that when we finally got in here. Hey, stop saying that. That's not true. Um, so when we come back in the next episode, we are going to hit the nav panel, and we're going to go to the next place on our, uh, on our quest, Weapons from the Void, which is a side quest. Acquire the science weapon on Groundbreaker. Acquire Phineas's science weapon. Okay, well, yeah, we'll work on that, but this is actually the next thing. So we got to speak to Gladys 
on the Groundbreaker. So that's what we're going to do in the next episode. Do I have level ups? I do have level ups. Look at that. I didn't even realize it. Okay, let's keep leveling up our ranged. Uh, we'll level up our dialogue a little bit more and our stealth a little bit more. And we now have... Whoops. No, 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 no. Here. There. And we now have a, another perk that we can take. I was looking at this um, weapon and armor durability loss perk. I think we're going to take that one. Excelente. And now we have uh, Vicar Max 2 uh, as a companion. We're going to have to get him some armor, though, because I don't think he wants to go fighting around in his uh, priestly robes there. Okay, cool, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and sell, uh, sell out. Share out. <laughs> sell out. Yeah, sell out. Share out the video. I appreciate that. Uh, it does help the channel. And we'll catch you all in the next episode. Goodbye.